Hello, Tyson Brown. I'm the Associate Dean of Undergraduate Admissions at the George Washington University. Today, we're gonna to share with you 10 things that parents and guardians should know about the college admissions process. Number one, colleges provide you an opportunity to get to know them. That could be information sessions, information on academic content, question and answer websites. This is your opportunity to ask the questions and learn the information that is important to you. Number two, holistic review is a term that you're probably gonna hear a lot about over the next year. Holistic review simply means looking at a student in all components, academic rigor, curriculum, test scores if appropriate. This is our opportunity to get a complete picture of what a student might contribute to our campuses. Number three, help your student determine where to apply by looking at fit. Fit is such a unique word. Where does your student fit? Academically, culturally, help students figure out what is the right environment for them at their institution? Number four, have a discussion about practical factors when narrowing your list. Cost, location, public versus private. These are topics that you might want to have a discussion about as you figure out which school has the right fit for your students. Number five, conversations about money are very important and they can often be difficult. It is important to have a realistic budget and to have a realistic conversation about what's affordable for students as they consider their options. Number six, it is essential to identify the important questions to ask each school. Are you test optional? Do you need a separate application for merit scholarships? Are there core curriculum or classes that must be attained prior to applying for admission? These are some of the core questions you're gonna to wanna to ask as you visit schools. Number seven, students' final curriculum choices are important. Rigor is important. Uh, sticking to core academic classes are important. Uh, making sure that you are taking advantage of the opportunities that are available to you at your particular school. Number eight, there are several possible outcomes for your student to hear back from schools. They could be offered admission through an early decision program, which means that it's binding. The school is expecting you to deposit and enroll. You could receive an acceptance offer through early action, which means that you are not binded to attending that school. You have a, until typically May 1st to make a decision. You also have, could be offered admission through regular decision. That opportunity gives you additional flexibility and requires a decision by May 1st. You could all be offered a deferred option. Uh, deferred simply means that they are moving your application from a early program, early decision or early action to regular decision. You also have the opportunity to be waitlisted. Waitlisted simply means that we are interested uh, and we are waiting to determine whether or not we will have enough space in the class to offer you a spot uh, for the fall. Unfortunately, last but not least, uh, there are denied communications. Uh, that simply means that we were not able to offer you an opportunity to attend that particular college or university for the fall. Number nine, consider alternatives if they make sense for your student. Alternatives could be a deferral. Uh, typically, you might hear this referred to as a gap year. Uh, that's the opportunity for you to pay your deposit, save your space in a class, and then take up to one year to arrive uh, on campus. You also could consider graduating in three years uh, by using advanced placement credit, international baccalaureate credit, uh, or dual enrollment credit from a two-year or four-year institution near your, near your hometown. Last but not least, consider transfer options. Uh, from a two-year or four-year institution, that is also a path that is completely viable for students to attend a college or university they have their hearts set on. Number 10, what are your student needs from this process? They need a listening ear. You know your student best. This is the opportunity for you to help them listen to what they are saying and what they are perhaps not saying. Trust the information sources, trust your school counselors, trust the admissions offices that you are applying to for concrete and credible information. Um, give your student the space to figure out this process and to navigate it. There will be many ups and downs, unfortunately, uh, but this is the opportunity for them to lean on you uh, for guidance. Um, give them the space to walk through a number of different emotions um, and talk to them about um, how to pivot if things do not work out the way that they thought they would. Thank you for your time. If you have questions about the admissions process, if you have questions about George Washington University, please feel free to reach out to us via email or phone. We'd be happy to talk to you. Thank you.